This video is sponsored by Serverless 360. More about them at the end. There is nothing more boring than videos on naming conventions. And I should know, I've watched every other video on YouTube about it. And they range from barely covering it all as part of something else, or they just go and read through the docs word for word, or talk you to death while looking at a spreadsheet. Now don't get me wrong, naming is extremely important, especially when you first get to the cloud. But you deserve better. So we're gonna spice things up by learning about a new free tool that's gonna do all of this for you. Now every time you build something in the cloud like this VM, you have to give it a name. And names come in two flavors, pets or cows. Pets are part of the family. They get a name and a birthday and we love them and we play with them. But cattle, they're not usually treated as part of the family and they come and go so fast they just get a number. And your cloud resources should be treated this way too. Your VM isn't your pet, it doesn't need a hug. It gets a number and it does a job and once that job is over, it gets deleted. And that's right where your naming convention becomes important. It helps you to stay organized and helps everyone else to know what's what and what it's doing. And you should also know that names in Azure can't be changed. So if you don't get it right, you'll have to delete those resources and start over which isn't really a big deal, it's just a waste of time. Now this tool, as you can see, is a website. This is actually running inside a container. And containers are very cool because you can run them on almost anything. So if you already have a container platform that you're using for Docker, Kubernetes, or whatever else, this will run there too. Now if you've never used containers at all, don't worry, I'll help you set up Docker Desktop so that you can play with this too. Now the only thing that you do need to know if you're building this on a VM running in Azure like I did, is your VM needs to support something called nested virtualization. That's where you can run VMs inside of VMs and only certain VM sizes support this. So if you don't know what any of that means, just remember when you build your VM, it should be a size like DS4V3. And under the video, I've got the resource links for everything we need to get going today, starting with downloading Docker Desktop. Now I'm running Windows 10, so I'll click right over here. And after you download it, just run the installer, follow the prompts, and after a reboot or two, you'll be ready to go. And it really is that simple to start running containers of your own. The next link takes us here to the GitHub repo where we can get the tool. You're gonna click on that code button right there and download as zip. While that's downloading, scroll down, and you'll see this section here that's gonna start telling you how to install it. We wanna click the link over here to run this as a Docker image. And we'll come back to this GitHub page in just a second. Let's go and extract the files from the zip we just downloaded. And you can put them wherever you like, copy that path and open a command prompt as administrator, and then CD over to that location. Now we need just two commands to get things set up. This Docker build command here will compile that source code you just downloaded into a Docker image. And that'll take about two, maybe three minutes. Once your image has been created, we need one more command to get started, and that's right over here. That's the docker run command. This is going to mount your Docker image as a container and start running it. And it's also going to create and mount a volume. Now, in case you're new to containers, you need to understand that they are stateless. Now, as for what that means for our naming tool, if you wanna save your configuration of everything we're gonna build, which you should, you're gonna need somewhere persistent to hold that data. Once that's done, click on this link that'll open a web page off of your local system where the container is running, and there she is. Now the first thing you'll need to do is set an administrator password, and then we can get things set up. But don't worry, your normal users won't need a password at all, because they can't make any changes. They can just generate names. Now at the bottom, there's an instructions link that'll walk you through everything I'm gonna show you and a whole lot more, you can also get around with that left navigation bar. So let's start with our configuration section. Now, since you're building a cattle type name, we'll be piecing that together from different components. And you have a whole list of things to choose from here. Just use the arrows to reorder them the way that you want. And if there's a particular thing that just doesn't make sense in your environment, hit the X and remove it. So for me, I'll remove orgs and units and then I've reordered the list so that the resource type and instance are at the end. Now the next section is the delimiter, and that's what's gonna separate the sections to make things easier to read. Now by default, this is a dash, but just for fun, I'll change mine to be an underscore. Now I know what some of you must be thinking about having symbols inside your names, but we'll come back to that in a minute. The next section is where you can set the definition of your components. 
click on environments and then you can add your own or edit the existing or remove whatever you don't like. For example, I'll delete the sandbox environment and then I'll rename dev to lab. And all the other sections that are here work just the same way. I'll go to the location section and just for argument's sake, I don't want my users to deploy any resources in Australia. So I'll remove all of those regions. And since we have East US 2, which is abbreviated here as EU2, I'll rename East US to be EU1, just so it's a little more consistent. Now click down on resource types. And this is where you're really gonna be spending the longest. And you can change which parts of your naming components you wanna include in every kind of resource type. And that starts with these two drop-down lists, the one for resource providers and the other for resources. So I'll open the resources one and I've got to scroll all the way down to find the compute Windows virtual machines. Then I can just click on the edit button on the right. And now you can choose to make any of the components we set up earlier as optional or excluded for VM names. So I'll make functions optional and then set projects to be excluded, which means when we get to the generator, that's gonna be hidden. Go through and set up all of your resources the way that you like and the last part I'll show you in this section is down at the bottom, the global configuration. Here you can back up the entire naming tool. And it's always a good practice to have a backup in case something goes wrong with your volume or with your container. Just click the export button here and that'll download a very large JSON file. Just put that somewhere safe. And if you have to rebuild the naming tool, you just come right back here to global configuration, click that import button, give it your JSON and you're back in business. Over on the left, let's take a quick look at the reference page. Now, based on all of your configurations, this will show you examples of what your resources would be named like. This way, you can choose to make changes and adjust things before you go and generate the first name. And we've got those same drop-down lists for resource type and provider. This time, let's click the resource provider drop-down and select compute. Then from the resource drop-down, we can see we're a limited list here, so it's easier to find Windows Virtual Machines. Now at the top of the screen there, you can see the example VM name. And under that, we have all of the components that the name was constructed from. And notice projects has been excluded from the list because we made that change earlier. And under that are where all of the best practices from all of the Azure docs have fed into the tool. So you didn't have to go and figure all that out for yourself. And notice this also includes the characters that are invalid for this type of resource. And then it uses regular expressions to put everything together. And the last section over on the left is where we're gonna generate the names. And the layout here should look pretty familiar by now. Click on the resource provider dropdown and select compute. Then our type of resource will be a Windows VM. And the components are listed in the order that we set them up way back in the beginning. Functions are optional and projects have been removed. Click to choose which environment you want and I'll just pick prod. For your locations, notice all those Australia regions are removed like we did before. I'll select East US 1, and for the instance number, I'll just use 3. Then click the Generate button at the bottom, and there is your name, PRD EU 1 VM 3. And we get the message that the underscore delimiter that we wanted wasn't actually supported by this particular resource, so it got removed. So when it comes to something like storage accounts that can only have letters and numbers and no symbols, we got you covered. So just copy the name, go back to the Azure portal, click to build a new resource, select a VM, and then paste in your name. Complete the build as normal, and there's our working VM. So you can see this is much cooler than reading docs and combing through spreadsheets. And I've got one last thing before you go because this gets even better in two ways. First is that you can tie this into all of your other processes and pipelines because the Azure naming tool has a fully functional API. Over on the left, click home at the top, and then we're gonna click on the admin button. And this is where you could reset your password if you want to, and there is also an API key. And you're gonna need that every time you make an API call. So back on the main homepage, click that link and you'll open the swagger, which is where you can see all of the API functions. And you can click to open any one of them, drop in the API key, and click the button here to generate the API call. One last thing before you start enjoying the Azure naming tool is you should enjoy this segue to our sponsor. 
The cloud can be a complex place, but Serverless 360 is trusted by many of the world's leading organizations to remove application blind spots and resolve your problems rapidly. You can instantly visualize, monitor, and fix any issues in your cloud apps, and then achieve end-to-end -end tracking of your business process flows, and Serverless 360 will save you time by auto-generating your documentation, turning your Azure subscription data into actionable insights for usage, security, and cost. Try Serverless 360 free for 15 days, or you can book a demo using the links in the resource section under the video. And now that you have the power to master naming in the cloud, go check out my governance series so you can get the rest of Azure all ready to go. Happy learning.